urophometry, the basics and the how to interpret the report, which is basically required for a nephrology resident. This is the urophometry report of a patient, which is showing the these parameters, and we will see how to interpret this. Whenever a patient is having lower urinary tract symptom, it can be classified according to the symptoms as the storage symptoms, voiding symptoms, or the post maturation symptoms. Storage symptoms are usually frequency, urgency, nocturia, that is basically the increased frequency, and there may be incontinence. And when we take the voiding symptom, these are basically related to the urinary stream. Sometimes hesitancy, terminal dribbling, dysuria, and the intermittent stream. And the third category is the post maturation symptoms, that is the uh, incomplete voiding. So these are all the basic three category of the voiding dysfunction. What are the causes for this BPH or there might be urethral stricture, detritus or dysenergia, overactive bladder or any obstructive etiology. Basically, we are going to find out the find out the clue of the etiology with the urophlometry. This is the part of the urodynamic study. Urodynamic study measures so many parameters. We will see it in a separate video, but uh, urophlometry is a part of the urodynamic study it is basically a screening test and it is non-invasive it is not a diagnostic test it is just a screening test and it uh, like in the report a pvr post white residual urine is given in the report it have to be measured with the ultrasound after the uh, urophlometry this won't directly give the pvr the urophlometry won't directly give the pvr report this have to be done by ultrasound to detect the uh, post white residual urine in the bladder after this urophlometry Basically, the patient have to void the urine in a funnel, which is basically a uroflow meter. And as I already told before, it is just a screening test, won't give the diagnosis. It just suggests and it won't diagnose or even predict the overactive bladder can't be ruled out. Since the urinary flow is the final pathway of the coordinated process of the maturation, that is why that is how detecting the flow will give uh, clue to diagnose the underlying etiology that is the basic mechanism of uh, basic principle behind this urophlometry so this is the basic curve in the urophlometry where there are two curves are given one is the flow another one is the volume here this is the flow curve this is the volume curve and here is the time in seconds and when we dissect this graph we will see in detail so this is how the flow graph appears this is the flow with in the y-axis we are having flow in ml per second here the, we are having the most important parameter which is q max that is maximal flow rate that is the peak of the graph this is the time to reach maximal flow and here is the average flow like the peak is the q max the midpoint is the average flow the entire duration from the starting till the patient completes the maturation is the voiding time Whereas flow time is the one during which the urinary flow occurs, that is the flow time. This is the difference between these two. And these are all the important parameters in the flow graph. I think this I already told flow rate, it's volume of fluid, like at what rate the urine is being expelled. Q max, the most important parameter. Then voided volume is the total amount of urine the patient voided during the process of maturation, flow time, average flow time to maximum flow this i have told the most important parameter in this to help to diagnose the underlying etiology is the q max the normal q max is usually it is age dependent criteria ranges from 17 to 24 depends on the male and female but for a, a gross point of view if the q max is less than 10 that indicates there is abnormality in the urophlometry so q max 10 is a criteria we will see about the normal values of other parameters usually the post voidal residual urine of the ultrasound that is being done after the urophlometry have to be less than 50 the normal q max as i already told it varies with the age and the patient's history but grossly we can take it is usually more than 15 ml per second is considered as normal less than 10 is abnormal and the normal range is more than 70 to 23 as per the age and the average flow is also in the range of 70 to 24 since we are looking at the q max this is a minor another detail about the normal average flow and the other important parameter is the voided volume the voided volume on an average is 250 to 550 ml the urinary bladder physiological volume is 600 ml that is at this volume patient will have a 
merge to maximum merge to maturate and anatomical volume is around 1 liter above which the urinary bladder burst so for the euro flow metry uh, to interpret the reports of the euro flow metry the volume the patient should have passed at least 250 to 500 ml of urine if he passed less than 150 ml of urine the test is invalid you can't interpret the test reports so this is also another important parameter and other minor parameters are flow time which is usually in the range of 20 to 30 seconds void time is approximately 25 plus or minus 10 seconds usually the void time is more than the flow time and the flow at 2 seconds is also usually in the range of 10 to 12 this is also a minor parameter in the euro flow metry and time to reach the maximum flow usually in the range of 7 to 10 seconds so these are all the normal parameters for the euro flow metry graph we will see like a few example theoretical examples if we take this normal flow uh, graph of a euro flow metry the abnormal graphs like this kind of picture like in delayed time to reach the peak and slow fall might seen in bph this prolonged time to reach the peak and the slow again it might seen in a bladder neck dysfunction this kind of box like pattern is typical of urethral stricture and sometimes this kind of irregular pattern might be there in detrusor dyssynergia and uh, with abdominal contraction without detrusor contraction this might kind of irregular flow patterns might come this is also another another theoretical graph in female bladder neck insufficiency this kind of initial obstruction then followed by full flow will be there these are all the different kind of graph pattern we might get in the flow graphs this i already told same in urethral structure it is flat this i already told changes in the graph pattern these are all the examples and this is another uh, graph showing the low q max the q max over here is approximately eight and also the graph is irregular this also indicates patient is having obstruction probably retrosal dysfunction so now we will come to the interpretation of this graph so this is a report of a patient euroflowmetry where we are having two graph gross appearance this graph is also okay this volume graph is also okay so first parameter we are going to say is just a second we are going to see is the void volume so how much the patient have voided here it is 260 so the test is valid since he have passed more than 150 ml the test is valid second we are going to see the important parameter maximum flow it is more than 15 like it is not abnormal so this is also normal average flow flow time time to maximum flow almost all in the normal range so this is a grossly normal this is the basics about Euroflowmetry, which is required for a nephrology resident grossly to detect what might be the abnormality this will be followed if there is any abnormality this will be followed by the Eurodynamic studies that we will see in a separate video